How many times have you heard the phrase spiral review? I feel like with any administration that I've ever worked with, they are constantly telling us that we need to spiral review our previously taught concepts with our kids. They're not wrong. We know this. But the big question is, though, how do we do it and how do we do it effectively and where's the time for it? And the answer to this is by incorporating math centers. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you are ready, give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and let's dive in and get started. So math centers or math stations, as I like to call them, they're a crucial part of our math instruction. They are just one component of the guided math format and they reinforce math skills while incorporating movement, teamwork, and student independence. But I often hear from teachers that I work with that incorporating math centers, it sounds great, but they just don't know how to make it work with their current curriculum. And let me tell you, math centers, they're not a curriculum. They are part of the guided math framework, which is how you integrate and teach your curriculum. It doesn't matter if you use GoMath or Eureka Math, or maybe you supplement with materials from my guided math curriculum. It doesn't matter what curriculum that you're using, it still can be done. So let's talk about a few things. First, you need to have a solid plan. You can't just throw some random activities into a tub and expect it to work. Effective planning is necessary to ensure smooth operation of your math center time and allowing you to dedicate your attention to your small groups. Think about what skills you want to cover and what types of activities that you want to use. I keep a page in my guided math binder and this is where I map out all of my stations for the week and the month. This not only helps with planning, but I can look back at it year after year to see what activities that I use. I also keep things really simple and I follow a clean streamlined format. There are lots of systems out there, but this is just how I taught myself and it's always worked for me. And so I just kind of stuck with it. So this is what my rotation board looks like. My math centers consist of stations number one, two, three, Technology and the teacher table. Station number one is always math facts because we as teachers know that kids need that continuous practice of basic facts all year long. At the beginning of the year, we start out with just basic facts and as the year progresses, our numbers become larger and I alternate activities between addition and subtraction. Now, stations two and three are always a review of a previously taught skill and the same goes for technology. The only time my students would practice the current skill that is being taught with our curriculum was at the teacher table. The teacher table is where your core instruction takes place. And this is where you're gonna focus on the current skills that your curriculum is teaching. Think about it. Your math center activities need to be something that your students can work on independently. If you're just introducing the concept of telling time to the minute, why would you put a telling time to the minute activity as part of your stations? You don't because they can't do it independently. And this is where I see so many teachers get caught up. Do not put an activity in your math stations until your students have mastered the concept and can work on it independently. You always want to expose your students to a wide variety of activities as well. I like to use the CPA approach for mathematics when thinking about planning my centers. So CPA stands for Concrete Pictorial Abstract. Think about what you want your students to work on and go from there. While I love a good freshly laminated game, sometimes teachers get caught up in the prep. Know that it doesn't have to be complicated and just keep things really simple. Use pieces of your curriculum in your math stations if you can, such as problem solving practice or even your curriculum workbook if you have to incorporate it. 
I prefer my mass centers to be a little more hands-on. Just throw some manipulatives into a tub and allow students to solve on whiteboards or in their math journals. Use task cards and games, interactive notebooks, or you can even throw in a fun math craft. Incorporate a mixture of concrete and abstract activities. When thinking about what types of activities to include, there are a few things that I want you to keep in mind. One, you don't want them to be too difficult since they're working independently, but you also want them to be very self-explanatory because the more challenging they are, the more pieces of directions that they have, the more likely you are going to have interruptions at your small group table. Use simple tasks that they can figure out on their own with little explanation. And since your students are going to be at various levels, try to use activities that will allow for easy differentiation to ensure that everyone is able to participate. This can easily be done by changing out numbers using dice or number cards. My best piece of advice for you is to just get started. Sit down and plan out your activities and use a variety of them so they're not all the same. You don't want each station to be working on task cards. Mix it up and have fun with it. Your math centers aren't about focusing on curriculum. They're about engaging students in independent work with previously taught skills so they get that continuous spiral review all year long. I'm gonna drop some helpful links in the description of this video to help you with your next steps, such as math center materials and how to easily differentiate. So you can check out those links in the description. You guys have a blessed one and I will see you in the next video. Bye.